Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Something a little bit different here. I've got in this bag here from Amiga Kit, I hope there's an ESD bag inside there, uh, a couple of Super Denise chips for the A600. Um, now, trying to source Super Denise chips at an affordable price is uh, proven difficult. They're selling for over £40 these days. So I thought, well, let's have a go at creating an adapter. And then I thought, well, actually, someone's probably already created one. So I went searching, and lo and behold, yeah, they already exist. So you can see here, Denise A373 PLCC Adapter 4, Revision A. It's This one was designed by uh, Matthias uh, Monk 2008. Does that say 2008? Surely it doesn't say 2008. Yes, it does. It says 2008. <laughs> so this is when this was created. So it's like 12 years ago. That's insane. Uh, www.amigaworld.de so yeah, you can get these from OSH Park. It is about, I don't know, $15 or something for three. So, you know, they work out about $5 each, which is a bit expensive for the size of the PCB. That's one of the things I'll say about OSH Park. The prices are a bit high. But then again, you have like free postage if you just go like with uh, regular mail. So you can see with this one here, I dove straight in, soldered it on. Oh, it's, to be fair, it's pretty early here and I'm tired and not, don't feel that great. So, uh, yeah, I'm not thinking properly is the point I'm trying to make. I just jumped straight in, soldered a socket on, and then thought, uh, hang on a minute, how are we going to solder the pins on the other side now, and how are we even going to even fit the thing on it? So I'll show you with this one here, I've just been uh, experimenting. The best way to do this is to literally put the, uh, the strips of those there, put your socket on, hang on, can't get it back on here, like that, do both of these, um, press the socket flat which then pushes these out a little bit and then solder you know one of each end there to make sure that and, and try and get it straight so that that's nice and straight but at the same time make sure the socket is flat so you've got a few things you need to do right off the bat here to secure these things in place but you can then pull this off these will be at the right height you can then solder all the connections on both those strips there and then put that back on and then the real challenge here you need a really small solder tip which I have but can you see how much space you've got here to get access to these pins that are just really close to the strip there super close I'll show you on macro when we're done but so yeah that's going to be really fiddly to assemble so the idea being, you obviously can fit an A600 Super Denise in here, which are a lot more readily available. The ones I got here were just under about £20, about £18 each or something. That's a big difference to the 40 odd pounds that you'll uh, spend on a, you know, the dip version. So the first one that I hastily put the socket on, I'll remove that socket in a minute and I'm going to redo it. So you can see what I've done with this one here now, is exactly as I described. I put this socket on here, held it, and then put these on. Uh, now, yeah, it's straighter than it looks. It's probably just like the angle I've got this at. But yeah, they're, they're nice and straight. Um, you can see there's barely anything here to solder onto because this is nice and flat. Hopefully, you can see it is. Um, and then I just anchored a couple of points on that there just to hold that in place as well. Um, now I'll need to undo those because obviously I haven't soldered the points here, under here. <laughs> this is the whole problem. It was just to get things in position so I could solder that, solder that, pull this off, solder all of these connections on the top here, on these two strips, then get the socket back on. Uh, now the difficulty here, as I said, is you've got to get a really fine tip to get into that strip there. And the strip on the other side, that's the worst bit. Then do the sensor ones. Again, pretty close down here, um, and then there's two strips here. You know, the one right next to the uh, the R strip of uh, pen header there, and the outer one. Anyway, I'll report back in a minute. Yeah, so I was wondering why nobody was manufacturing and selling these on eBay, if I'm honest. And uh, now I know why, because these are a bit of a pain to assemble. And right, you can see I'm going at this at a fair rate and not see it. I'll do those bits in there in a minute. I want to be careful not to get solder anywhere near where the PLCC socket is going to be. And if I just bob into them like that, you'll see they start to become equal in size. That needs a bit of 
flux there. Yeah, that's not too bad. So there we go, that's the two strips of Pinetta soldered on. It's about as straight as I can get it, I think. We just need to get this back on. No, there we go. And uh, solder <laughs> again. Oh. This is the bit I'm not looking forward to. Anyway, let's just anchor the same points I had soldered before. Press it down. Then just inspect it to make sure it's about as flat and flush as it's uh, going to get. Yeah, it's not too bad that. So it's took me ages, but uh, yeah, we've got the end result there, I think. So the other thing I need to do, and I should have done this before I started really. Can you see there's all these little burrs on the edge here? You know, the bits where the balls would have been joined together and then separated. Uh, so you could, you know, just use some cutters, try and snip them off, or a craft knife, or a file. I'm going to go over these with a file, I think. I'll just get a, a file and just file down these little edges here. The majority of that bit there just went with a knife. And then obviously we'll clean over this with uh, cotton bud and IPA and uh, to push it. There we go, one down. So that's all the burrs uh, cut off the sides and stuff and smoothed down. It's looking really good now, it just needs the flux removing. So we'll use the cotton buds first of all and then we'll get the to push onto it because we can't get between the nooks and crannies. Oh, I'm successfully making a right mess here. I've just spilled off my IPA all over this. Which is a bad news because IPA is super rare, isn't it, these days and dead expensive. Or well, it was. I don't know. Has it gone back down to normal prices? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. So there are some streaks of stuff on that and I'll just wipe that down a little bit once most of the IPA is worn off because it's, you know, it's covered in IPA. Uh, but it looks okay. So coming back to this first one I did here, I'm going to just remove this socket actually with the desold station. It's not very exciting, but uh, I need to do it. I'm doing it sideways here, just because I'm not having to fight gravity by sucking straight upwards. It might just make it a bit easier. Ah, oh, there we go. Straight off. Few. Just means I can redo that one now really easily. No damage to the socket or the board. Thank God for that. So I've got my ESD wrist strap on here. Let's have a go at uh, looking at these chips. I hope these are in an ESD bag. These came from Analogic. Did I say a MIGI kit before? I meant Analogic. So let's just carefully try and uh, open that bubble wrap. I hate it when people stick tape all the way around bubble wrap. You just can't find the end of it. And it just makes it really difficult. Oh my god, they've put the chips straight in there. Oh no, they haven't. Thank god for that. <laughs> yeah. I thought the bare chips were just straight in the bubble wrap then for a minute. To be fair, Analogic UK are really good. Every IC I've had from them has uh, had suitable uh, packaging like this. You can see the Analogic uh, serial number or something that's stuck on there. I'm trying to work out whether these are brand new or reclaimed. They kind of look like they've got bits of solder on, but I'm not sure. Yeah, they look new. Anyway, so here's our socket. I can't work out where pin 1 is on that. I think it's up here. I think that's pin 1. So, I would assume it goes this way. Like that. So I'm just going to kind of carefully hold it underneath of the socket and press it in. Yeah, there we go. So that's in. Nice and straight. So I'll just wipe over the streaky bits there, just to make that look nice. There's nothing worse than having a board that looks streaky after you've finished cleaning it. There you go, can you see the difference? Look at the right hand side versus the left hand side. You can see that's all streaky over there. And then we'll go test this. And I'm going to stick this in my 500 plus. Now, I've pointed out in the past the issue here, the way you get round pins like this going into where you'd have flat pins, but these are fairly thin to be fair, um, you can damage the socket, you know, it widens the socket connections there, but this is only ever going to stay on that board. 
it's the one thing I'm missing from my 500 plus is a Super Denise because I borrowed the original one to put in my 2000 now you could argue the best course of action would be to stick this in the 2000 and uh, remove the one in the 2000 stick that back into the 500 plus it's just uh, a lot of hassle going to take my 2000 back to bits again just to get that out plus you can have the same issue they want to stick this in the 2000 I'm then going to widen the socket there aren't I so yeah, so it's kind of as long as it is wide, but uh, anyway, like I say, this will stay in that 500 plus board, so if it does widen the pins ever so slightly, it isn't the end of the world, it's always going to be on there. Yeah, so there we go, all cleaned up, ready to test, let's stick it on my 500 plus. So here we are with uh, Mr. A500 plus, this is the board I repaired in a previous video, let's give you a quick look at the board. So you can see I've got the ROM switcher here that I showed in a previous video from Solid Core, there's another one that I'm going to do a review of very soon. And there's about a million wires on the underside. Uh, it was recapped, and you can see uh, some solder mask uh, replacement here. You know, use some green uh, nail polish actually. Uh, but it came out really well. This board has been rock solid. I had a number of people saying, "Well, it's not going to last very long. You'll just have intermittent problems with it." Blah blah blah. This has been in use ever since I did that video. Every other week, this board comes out for something for some sort of testing. And you know what? It has been rock solid. Anyway, let's just remove the uh, Denise here. Originally, as I say, this had a super Denise. Let's just push it back down again on that side. There we go. Sometimes, if you push it down back down on one side, you've just lifted out a little bit. It makes it easier to get the other side out. It's just stuck in that corner there. Look, that's it. So, pins are nice and straight. I'll put that onto the SD pad there. So, our pin one marking is down here. Uh, pin one wants to go up that way. So I don't know how well this is going to fit this particular board, you know, because of the, the way this board sticks out, you know, with this bit here. Some systems, it might be a bit difficult to fit it in, but there you go, see, that's gone in. So let's connect uh, video and power and see if it works. As I say, it's got a ROM switcher this, so it's obviously currently switched into 1.3, switch it off and on. Just give it another check. I'll just show you, we are using the adapter here. Yeah, we've got a Guru. That's kind of normal when you've not got a floppy drive or a keyboard connected. You kind of get weird things going on. I get the same thing with an R6. You don't tend to get it with the, the earlier revisions, like a Rev3 or a Rev5. Uh, but I've seen this behaviour where you get a random Guru like that. Just from switching it off and on too quickly and, as I say, not having some of the other things connected, you can get Gurus. But as you can see, the chip is in there. And it is working. So, I mean, I've mentioned before you can use an A600 Super Denise on these, I think, with an adapter. But, uh, yeah, I finally got round to making my own adapter. And as I say, I've needed to, because 40 quid for a Super Denise is just crazy money. You could probably buy an Amiga for that. <laughs> this is the thing, or a faulty A500 Plus, you know, around the 50, 60 pound mark. You may as well buy one of those rather than the actual Super Denise. Booting Amiga test kit here, looking at that, it says Denise FFFC. That's the ECS version, I'm pretty sure. And if I escape out there and have a look here, you can see it says there ECS slash PAL. It would say uh, OCS, I think, if it was uh, standard Denise. And I booted from SCSI there, that'll be a subsequent video. If I just go into my utilities, let's just have a look, because I think one or two of them will tell us whether it's got a Super Denise. Well, we know it's got a Super Denise. <laughs> there isn't a PLCC version of the standard Denise, so it's not like you could have the wrong version or something. Uh, it might tell us in there, sysinfo, let's have a look there. Yeah, it says up there, ECS Denise. Nice. So with the SCSI interface, we've got an additional 2 meg as well. So we should be able to load uh, some games. Let's just say, I think I've got Time Gal on here. Let's just launch that. Sweet. And a bit of Wings of Death. I don't think there are any games that actually utilise ECS. I could be wrong. 
please post in the comments down below of any games you know that need ECS. I think the general rule was, I'm always amazed at this image, the contrast between the blues and purples in the background with that red always makes this, well to my eyes anyway, it looks like the dragon is kind of floating above the background. I mentioned this a number of times to people in uh, the streams and things of that on their channels. I don't know how well that's coming across to me, it looks like that's floating. Yeah, that dragon always looks like it's floating over the background to me. It could be my eyes. It's amazing artwork there. Please let me know if you're aware of any games that need ECS or can use ECS. I'm not aware of any. And I think the reason being is developers, you know, they used a bit of common sense really. They thought, well, if we limit a game to ECS, make it ECS only, that cuts out the 500. So, we may as well just go with the standard video modes. So, yeah, I don't think uh, anybody really used the ECS features of uh, Super Denise there. Sweet. The ST version of this game is really good as well. It makes me wonder whether it was an ST game that was ported to the Amiga. Yeah, so very pleased with that. It was worth all the hassle of uh, assembling that adapter there. And the reason these are probably cheaper is they seldom fail on the A600. I mean, I don't know whether there's any caps around the area where corrosion could damage it, so from time to time you may need to swap one of those out on an A600 due to corrosion. But if places like Analogic have got these in stock from uh, back in the day, they're the sort of thing that's never going to be needed by anybody, really, unless you do something like this and make an adapter. And I think also the Dip Super Denise, um, the reason they got up in price is because they're just becoming harder to find. You know, there are fewer and fewer A500s available these days. Well, 500 pluses, which is where they originally shipped on. And of course, some of the later 2000s would have had that Super Denise. So you can see the scary wires under there from when I did that repair. But yeah, this has been a really solid board. I'm very pleased with the way this came out. It doesn't look great. It really doesn't. But it is so robust. So there'll be a link down below to the boards on OSH Park. You need a 52-pin PLCC socket here, uh, and obviously, you know, you want through hole, not SMD. Some of them are SMD ones, uh, and obviously, get yourself an A373 from Analogic. Um, if you buy more than one of these, they're a bit cheaper. I think if you buy three, they're about 17 or 18 pounds each, which yeah, it kind of makes it worthwhile. You could buy yourself a batch of three, and that's probably what I'll do with these. Buy a batch of three make three of them up, get three chips, sell one or two of them, keep one yourself. In my case I'm going to keep two and then uh, sell one. I'll, I'll sell the one that goes with this chip and just order myself another chip for the one I'm going to keep as a spare. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please consider posting a comment below or subscribing. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel also please see the Patreon links down below. You can also donate via coffee if you want to buy me a coffee. You can do that uh, following the link down below. And coffee just acts at PayPal, so it's like it's dead easy to do. But the small donations mean that I can continue to do these uh, videos. So thank you very much. I'll catch you in the next video.